Yeah, my name is Evans Mensah. We've been talking about the very controversial topic the whole of, uh, you know, this week and last week, yeah. which is the controversial medical drones policy. And, of course, the controversy today has centered really around the press conference done by the Information Ministry at which uh, accusations were made. Uh, that pronouncement made by the Ghana Medical Association in the past. Mm. Of course, because the Ghana Medical Association had come out to say that they want this to be suspended, the implementation to be suspended. So certainly the ministry thought it wise to yeah, respond. The, the GMA, of course, had, had objected to these uh, claims made and attributed to them. Mm. Uh, uh, just in the last few minutes, the information ministry mm. uh, had issued a statement following uh, some meetings that have been had today on this matter. My colleague, uh, Elton Brobe, has a copy of this. Elton, what does this statement say? So first, let me talk about those who were at this particular meeting. This was chaired by the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Dibahumi. I also attended uh, this meeting. It was Dr. Uh, Mr. Kweku Ajman Menu, the Minister for Health, Dr. Insian Sari, Director General Ghana Health Services, Dr. Frank Ankobia, President of the GMA, Dr. Frank Srebo, Vice President, Dr. Justice Janssen, Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, and Mr. Daniel Balfour of Zipline. Now, key point, the outcome, uh, according to the statement, uh, they are saying the discussions were very fruitful and productive, and it was agreed that going forward, the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service will engage in a process of enhanced consultation with the GMA and other stakeholders in the process of implementation of the drones for medical supply projects. So this is basically the outcome of this particular meeting. And this statement is signed by the Deputy Information Minister, Pius Enam Hajide. Okay. So um, that is the statement uh, coming from the Information uh, Ministry on, on the drones matter. And if you're just joining us, the, the meeting uh, had just uh, had concluded some, some time ago. But this is the outcome that has been uh, communicated. It says, the, uh, in essence, the discussion were very fruitful and, and productive. It was agreed that going forward, the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service will engage in a process of enhanced consultation with the GMA and other stakeholders in the process of implementation of the drones for medical supplies project. Justice Yang Singh is the General Secretary of the Association. He was part of this meeting. He's here in the studio. Um, is it, Dr. Yang Singh, does this reflect what you discuss at this meeting? Well, uh, this is the official release from the seat of government. Yes, and signed I by uh, Pios Enam Haji, the Deputy Information Minister. I don't have any cause to doubt what has been brought. Yes, my name is in there as one of the persons who was in a meeting. We discussed several issues, including what we just discussed on your program. On my program, yes. which is the attributions made the, to you is, yes. and the GMA. Yes, we. I mean, sir, was, uh, that, that was no, 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 no. Okay. We, we, what I'm saying is that yes, as has been rightly said, there was a meeting. Several things were discussed. But the conclusion is, as has been put out there, so okay. we don't have any problem. So fundamentally, you are going to be available for you know dialogue. On well, this we matter. have actually called for same okay. in our mm. release yesterday. We said that look, we think there is a need for broader stakeholder consultation. So if government has taken heed and has more or less accepted our request that there should be broader stakeholder consultation and has agreed to do that we think it is but your first right demand was that yes let's consult but suspend it yes that while, while is consult. our demand we've put that to government but we didn't see that address in well the i have no idea what goes into the decision making at the flagstaff house okay but we have put our statement out the people of ghana have said but i'm it. sure you've made you in this meeting you would have made the point what about i'm saying is that the position of the gma was well espoused at the meeting. Okay. So whatever our position is, it's exactly what we put out yesterday. Okay. Mm. It and, hasn't changed. And, and Evans, I think that it will be important for us to find out whether or not you created or you made it clear to them how you want this consultation well, to be. Well, I mean, well, is there the even a timeline? The consultations haven't started. The hope is that we'll meet as soon as possible. Of course, you know, government machinery works differently. They may have to go through some system. And like you said, GMA and other stakeholders uh, I cannot detect the pace, but the hope is that these things will be done as quickly as possible. And then uh, whatever the final conclusions, I'm sure the people of Ghana will get to know. Did point. you, from, if you read this, it appears the thing, will, the project won't be suspended, but the consultations will happen. Are you happy with that? Well, we discussed consultations. So for now, 
what we put out yesterday's stance, the consultations we've discussed with them. But like, if you want yes, you put out yesterday's stance, then see, the it, consultation is dependent on it being suspended first. The issue is that we have made our requests. Government may have to take a formal decision. So government disagrees with the suspension. Well, I cannot say that because that is not mentioned in, in this release as you just read out or okay. as you just showed. You know, we can get clarity on that. Yes, we, we can, can get, clarity. get clarity. Let's get clarity. Let's speak to the man who signed it. Uh, Pius Enam Hajide is a deputy information minister. Still with us on the line. Hey, Mr. Enam Hajide, I'm grateful that you, 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 hold, you held onto the line there. But can you clarify this for me? In this meeting, um, uh, Mr. Ya- Dr. Yang Singh says they put forward the issues that they captured in their statement, which is one, suspend the, the, the initiative and let's consult. In the statement I just read, which you signed, government has agreed to consult, but there's, it's quiet on whether or not you're going to suspend it. What is the government positioning on that? Well, thank you very much. First of all, uh, the government is grateful to the Ghana Medical Association, which was ably represented by Dr. Frank Sribo, the Vice President, uh, Dr. Uh, Justice Yangsin, the Secretary, and Dr. Frank Ankobia, the President, uh, for their attendance uh, at this meeting. Uh, like I've said in the statement, uh, was very successful and very productive. And uh, going forward, we have agreed that uh, we will engage uh, not just with the GMA, but uh, other stakeholders uh, in the implementation uh, of the drones for medical supplies. Uh, this has been the scheme with which uh, the, the governments have intended from the very beginning uh, to proceed, uh, that when we have seen the green light, as we have seen uh, through the passage uh, by parliament uh, of these uh, drones for medical supplies, we were going to necessarily, as a matter of course, engage with the stakeholders uh, in the implementation process. Will you so suspend it while you now, consult? Now, no, no. Uh, uh, like uh, has been put out, uh, we will continue to meet uh, even within the implementation of the uh, of the uh, the deal as has been passed by by Parliament. Okay, so the consultations. When is it starting? Well, the consultations have started. Uh, we are only deepening it uh, through these meetings today. Recall that uh, in my earlier uh, discussions with you, I had said that this matter was made public and public input continued to pour in uh, all along the line. We are deepening the process. and it. Hello, Mr. Ajide. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Um, let's uh, get him back because I need to understand something. If uh, Are they going to implement this whilst they consult? Because consultation means that you are hoping to get input that may shape the implementation. Um, and so we need to understand what government intends to do. Is it that we'll, we'll go ahead with the drones thing whilst we consult? And what of what value is that consultation, really? If the, the process that is going to be rolled out anyway whilst consultations happen. We need to clear that out. Um, Mr. Yangson, you just heard there that your first demand won't be met, but the consultations will happen. Well, government reserve the right to take decisions. So we don't have any qualms with whatever decision they'll be taking finally. But for us, we believe that what we have put out there represents the views of the association. Now, let me also make this statement. The GMA in that release yesterday did not say that we do not want drones to be used in this country or otherwise. All we said is that from where we sit, based on the information we have, we think that the current process should be suspended. And when we say something should be suspended, it doesn't mean that it's been thrown away for good. Suspended, let's go into that broader stakeholder consultation. Out of it, we may come out with ways of maybe improving the current thing or maybe take it as it stands now. That is our position. Mm. Because we think that based on all the bits that we were able to put together, that will be the right approach. You will not get the first, you get the consultation. And that's why I seek to clarify when we forget, Paul Sajide, what is going to happen. Is it that you're going to roll out whilst they consult alongside? I don't know. But, what's but that, that, that is their decision. I, I can I can. But, I but, but how does that work for the GMA? Because your, your position really is that it should be suspended, see, which see, means, like Evan said. Okay, the, see, like it's been stated. The engagement, as was put out in this statement that has been released, enhanced engagement. So I'm sure when we get to that engagement bit, where we start discussing issues, we may ask for 
what we have put out there today. Uh, yes, what we put out yesterday. there yesterday. So out of the engagement, we will be in a better position to know government's true position as to how this should be handled. Okay. Now, based on what they tell us, if we think we can marry the two, we'll make it clear. If okay. we think what we are thinking should she prevail, hold. I'm sure we'll make you that as well. clear as uh, well. And, and very finally, uh, and, and, and the initial point, they said you made that as well. The accusations that were made against the GMA at the Information Ministry press conference was part of something that you represented today in this meeting. I know you, you the references have been made on Top Story by the uh, Deputy Minister to some interviews you had granted on, a, on another station in Accra, uh, CTFM, in which he had said that you had endorsed this. We've pulled up that story for you, in which it's reported that uh, the GMA, while praising the drones policy, also went ahead and, 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 and see, said see, Ivers, other the, things. The, 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 what you gave me is here. Now, anybody who probably is also reading at the same point, there's a, a quote here. He says, Ghana this week will be signing an MOU. And by the middle of this year or by September, we will join Malawi and Rwanda with using drone technology to deliver blood supplies and essential services. So there, it cannot be that at that time, when I was purported to have made certain statements that the minister is quoting, we had a drone deal on the table. No, but he said that... that please, uh, please, if I, no, that. no, he said, he said here yeah, that... The, the, that the, he the said at the time... He said the no, please. Listen, he said at the time, the drone deal was on the table. Yeah. You can go the back... intention. No, not the intention. He said the drone no, deal I'm, was I'm on the table. I'm referring to the original comment in the press conference. Please, conference, please, please. I'm saying that on this program today, yeah. he said that the drone deal was on the table. Okay. And I'm saying at this very report that he was but, but alluding you, you to... But you praised the drone deal. That's what I'm saying that even the report itself says that Ghana will be signing the MOU by the middle... Okay. Uh, this week, Ghana will be signing the MOU. Yeah. And... By the middle of this year, by September. Okay. So what I'm saying that at the time, it was something that the reporter just said. Look, this is what government says mm. they want to do. Yeah. We, we, it, it talks about. And, and, and did you praise it or not? No, I didn't pl okay. praise it. Look, okay. it was talking about the use of technology. It spoke about ambulances, and this is where ambulances had just been given 275 or whatever. So at that point, the conversation was about. What we have been saying about emergency medical okay. services. And then the reporter says, government says these efforts will be done to improve it. And I stated clearly the context. And let me read it so that you all get it. I said, well, for us as an association, on countless occasions, we have bemoaned the state of emergency medical services in the country. So if efforts, efforts, poor I didn't say effort mm. to refer to saving a drone. But the are being made, the drones, please, that's it? yes, are being made by government to ensure we strengthen that aspect of our healthcare delivery. Then we'll say kudos. So when it, when, so, when the report says that you praise the drones policy, it was that a representation no, of what they did? No, okay. I, I, I don't think okay. so. This is the statement Dr. I made. Doctor Yang, saying, I'm we crazy. said if efforts are being made to improve that sector, we praise it. Is, is that a? I mean, okay. Gosh. Dr. Yang, I'm grateful that you joined us, and I'm pretty sure this this matter. Uh, now the consultations are starting. I guess possibly progress will eventually be made. But I'm grateful that you joined us. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Dr. Yang. He's the General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. Now you want to join us? Which of you's on this war all important matter? You've heard the controversy. You've heard the latest position on this. There is going to be consultation. I want to hear from you because this is designed to serve you wherever you are in the country. Zero two four four three four zero four three seven. And we're moving straight to the northern region because police there are investigating social media accounts reportedly seeking to cause confusion less than 24 hours to the funeral rite of the late Dagwam overloads. According to police public, public relations officer DSP Yusuf Tanko, they have intercepted false audio clips promoting division and expressing the intent to mar the burial ceremony. The parties ensuring the burial of the two late chiefs have already pledged their support to the process. DSP Tanko has been outlining security arrangements ahead of the event, including night patrols and mounting snap checks. A lot of arrangements will be instituted. Uh, we need to erect a snap check point at the entrances of END. We also will have to conduct mobile and vehicular patrols, uh, some vehicular and foot patrols. We will also uh, do nine patrols, and at the funeral ground itself, 
we will station enough men that to be able to uh, control the teaming crowd that will be coming. And we will have places where ordinary persons will not be allowed to access. And those places will have to be guarded by our men to prevent uh, people who are not supposed to be there from assessing those places. So arrangements have been done day in, day out. We we'll brief our men on exactly what they should do. This may be new to many residents, and one may wonder why has it become necessary. This is a very new funeral. The whole of Jagmon, uh, there are two overlords who are late. They are going to have funerals for them. And a lot of people will troop to the funeral ground. Even uh, spectators, people who want to see how the Yana funerals are uh, done, will also be there to witness us. So it is important that we get enough men to be able to control the teaming population that will be trooping to the funeral ground. Whilst you are working on the ground, what's the strategy to deal with individuals who seek to use social media to, to cause trouble? Uh, as we speak, there are investigations ongoing on some tapes and voices or audio voices that uh, or audio which uh, we have intercepted and which are uh, which contain messages that does not promote peace as far as the funeral performances are concerned. Uh, those investigations are being uh, conducted. Mm. DSP Tanko there. Well, security analyst Dr. Kwesi Enin wants government to go all out to ensure that there is peace during and after the funeral. He spoke on PM Express on the Joy News Channel yesterday. The ability to contain those emotions, otherwise they begin to have some security implications. And from the Guardian article, and I'm sure quite a number of other international newspapers are writing, um, other <coughs> intelligence agencies are assessing the threat, because this goes beyond just the bomb. Mm. It's about whether we are secure enough for people to invest here whether our intelligence and security forces have understood the threat and can prevent it from escalating. But let me make a final point. As Ghanaians, we have an interest in ensuring that we bring this crisis to an end in which the critical stakeholders are satisfied that they must give and then take. We cannot resolve it in a manner where everybody becomes a total winner now. We've got to give that to take. And we need to reach that point where the state uses its resources, its coercive powers, its conflict resolution powers to say enough is enough. You heard uh, the Dr. Kwesi Ene. Well, Principal Program Officer of the Northern Regional Peace Council, Nuhu Abubakari, says they have intensified engagement with key stakeholders to ensure they keep their commitment to the peace roadmap by the two four led committee of eminent chiefs. He however urged the, resp the responsible use of social media ahead of the funeral rite. The council has been undertaking several preventive engagement involving the key leaders from the two sides, trying to ensure that two leaders respect the corridors of the roadmap so we can go on the line now uh, because we already have uh, Mr. Bukari on, Abukari on the line. Mr. Bukari, thank you very much uh, this evening here on News Night. Uh, why this intense engagement of the key stakeholders? The intention is to uh, and guarantee the, the process and to reinforce uh, any, I mean, to, to, to take charge of any outstanding issue that might have been left out. These are issues of tradition, and uh, depending on uh, who is concerned, the applications are usually uh, a source of concern to several others. I'm talking about the appropriate uh, applications of uh, tradition. And we are also mindful that the leadership of the two sides are trying in their bid to build a shared future from a divided past. And so there are possibilities of some of their uh, sympathizers feeling uh, peeved or uh, trying in a way to isolate uh, uh, eminent persons from the divide who have roles to play in order to make the two funerals credible or acceptable in uh, traditional perspectives.
So we've heard concerns about social media and the fact that, uh, that well, the police is saying that there are recordings of people who are intending to, to uh, use social media to bring about some divisions. What's the Peace Council doing about that? We have been talking to youth and talking to the general public to avoid uh, sharing even messages on the social media uh, within the tradition of Dagbon, it is abominable for one to share an information that you, on your own uh, capacity, will not say the same words when you are in front of a particular chief. And so it is not acceptable to, 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 to share or to quote from a particular source that uh, is not acceptable in the custom of uh, the Dagbon. Uh, for instance, uh, it is also not acceptable to belittle and uh, achieve message or statements. It is deemed as a, a disrespect to the statue of the chief. And we are trying to make sure that we do not we prevent any um, possibility of poaching groups against groups and guiding uh, the process to ensure that uh, we mitigate any potential threat. We are in the past witness instances where voices, anonymous voices, are recorded and seeking to undermine the social cohesion within the region, okay. even trying to push ethnic groups against groups. Okay. And so we are mindful about all these things, and that is informing our approach. Ms. Abukari, my very final question to you is whether or not the area is ready for this uh, funeral, given all of these you know, uh, concerns of, or, or, that are coming up. Yes, the area is ready. We are grateful to the uh, security agencies, but we are urging them to ensure that each of the parties comply and respect the corridors of the uh, 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 roadmap. And we are also grateful to the leaders, both sides. They have reached out to each other, formally inviting their uh, 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 perceived uh, former uh, opponents to participate. And they are making arrangements to receive them and it is also uh, conducive for the funerals to go on because leadership are restraining uh, new demands and urging their followers not to create any possible new demand because it, it wasn't part of the process and should not be part of the process. And those are all signs of positive signs for us. And we are grateful to all of them. Okay, so we're grateful that you joined us this evening. Principal Pro Program Officer of the Northern Regional Peace Council, Nuhu Abukari there. And it's about time we do some business, George. And even Christine Lagarde is coming to town. Okay. And she's, she's welcome. Okay, so let's, let's say what, <laughs> That's what such a some dry people response. would say that one of the issues that would dominate her discussions about Ghana's program with the IMF and whether we are indeed on track to have the technical completion this month and then the right completion in april 2019 oh, wow. how technical and uh, the guidance that's called service also forecasting further reduction in inflation rate the business news on news night is brought to you by mtn business welcome to the new world of business kingdom books and stationery your number one stop shop for all your office essentials and mark auto parts distributors of Isuzu pickups and Chevy cars and First National Bank. We are the bank that understands your business. First National Bank, how can we help you? Your success, our passion. Hello? I say, I want to know Vodafone normal 10 megabyte free data. It will call Smart Ruby Adwin. Share. 
Hello, have you heard that Vodafone is giving 10 megabyte free data for every minute you talk? You just dial 50 50. Yeah, hello. Aha, right now, we the Vodafone people just they call, call plenty. Sick of us, you talk one minute, you go get 10 megabytes. You talk two minutes, you go get 20 megabytes. Three minutes. Call Vodafone or any network and get 10 megabytes of free data every minute you talk. It's simple. Talk to browse. The more you talk, the more data you get. Dial 50 50 to subscribe talk more browse more terms and conditions apply the future is exciting ready Shop. Let me explain in ye. A man your mistake will be able to use cement for all your projects. That's why Gossip, with 50 years experience, wants to develop various greater, what are your various jobs, what was super rapid 32.5 hours, on and on your suitable for your dream house, at your screen dinner, or the duchy ye. Nazi own plastering now, on man a perfect finish. Gossip, what was super strong 42.5 hours, or your best suited for slabs, pavement blocks, Nazi your blocks in Ankasa, watch your pump. For the biggest construction works like roads, bridges, on your high rise buildings, are contract to be around use Gossam Extra 42.5 and Missy the Bide. Choose Gossam always. Gossam, the nation builder. With that joint man, say, look at your neighbor, say, nah! Can you pray? Say, look into your neighbor's hands. As I look my neighbor, I got one hand. <laughs> we know those hands with the bread, they go two vampire dead that us. Say, hey, Jesus, we say amen. Let's tell your neighbor, never. We say never. Can you run? <laughs> yes, we've got them all. Eight of the best comedians out of Africa. Get ready for the most hilarious night of your life. The night of 1025 laughs and music. Boxing Day, December 26th at the conference center. On stage, Bobby, Kenny Black, Sheila, Akbaruru, Jacinta, Foster Romanos, Lexi the Comic, James Brown, plus performances from Kitty and Joe Metzl. Get your tickets now from Charterhouse, X-Men and Nalem stores in Osu, Accra and Junction Malls for only 200 Ghana Cities Standard, 300 Ghana Cities Premium and 400 Ghana Cities VIP. The night of 1025 Mass and Music is supported by Marriott Hotel, Japan Motors and Joy FM. Joy 99.7 FM. You welcome back to Business on news night on progress of ghana's program with the international monetary fund is likely to dominate discussions as the managing director of the imf as this christian lagarde begins a three-day working visit to Accra from next monday we have more in this report the imf boss christian lagarde is coming to ghana at a time that managers are working to technically end the program by december 2018 however one is not sure whether government will be able to meet all the critical benchmarks like the end-of-year budget deficit as well as some structural targets. Some economists have argued that the program cannot be fully completed unless the IMF board meets in April 2019 to review Ghana's performance before the program can be said to have been completed. Another issue set to be a threat to the program's completion has been the current challenges with revenue mobilization, dealing with the banking sector issues, including the savings and loans, as well as the microfinance sector. But for Deputy Minister of Information, Pius Enam Hajide, the visit is a vote of confidence in what government is doing. The visit of the IMF boss marks an appreciation of our policy, direction and solid economic fundamentals. Christine Lagarde will start her working visit by opening the future of Work Sub Saharan Africa Conference in Accra. She is also expected to have bilateral talks with President Okufuado on that same day. She is expected to leave on December 18 to South Africa as part of her Africa tour program. And that was a business tax report. Inflation rates could be going down further in the coming months. The prediction is coming after the rates for the month of November went down marginally to 9.3%. Now, the focus of the forecast will be based on the fact that it will be influenced by the food harvest, the bumper harvest that we are currently experiencing. But acting government statistician Bauer Diaz says it will also depend on government's policies. 
be fined and what they imply for inflation for the subsequent months. Trend is declining when you look at transport, when you look at food especially. And that's what I'm asking. Them. Yeah, if it continues like this, then obviously you see further declines. But we don't know what policies will come on board. We mentioned as the lowest since it's January 2013. Banwadie is the acting government statistician. Now, brewery firm Guinness Ghana Breweries will in the coming months be relabeling its uh, brand to Guinness Ghana PLC. The moves should have a full shareholder approval. The announcement was made when top management of the firm took their turn at the facts behind the figure session organized by the Ghana Stock Exchange. Board chair, that is Dr. Felix Ado, expressed or said the move is actually to comply with the recent Company Act. Speaking to Joy Business at the Facts Behind the Figures session, board chair of Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited, Dr. Felix Ado, said the relabeling is in compliance with the new Companies Act. The managing director of Guinness Ghana, Gavin Pike, said even though Ghana's business environment has improved, high taxation and the volatility of the city against major currencies like the dollar remains a challenge to its operations. And that was a report by Charles Aite summing up the issues that came up at the Ghana Stock Exchange Facts behind the figures session today. Now, Ghana has signed a bilateral air service agreement with Canada, Guyana, Jamaica and Seychelles in the opening of the International Civil Aviation Organization Air Service Negotiation Agreement, that is, event that is currently happening in Nairobi, Kenya. Deputy Minister for Aviation, Governor Shudako, signed these agreements on behalf of government. We have the details in this report. The signing of the air service agreements between Ghana and Guyana, Jamaica, Canada and Seychelles is expected to pave way for commercial flight activity between Ghana and the said countries. Stakeholders in the aviation sector anticipate the negotiation of these agreements will significantly complement the current initiatives of the government to facilitate and enhance the aviation sector. Passenger numbers at the nation's airport might see significant increase and hence boost revenues for the aviation industry and essentially position Ghana as an aviation hub. Some have also argued that looking at the amount of money that has gone into the construction of the new international airport as well as the regional airports, there's a need to bring on board more international airlines to help recoup their investment. As the 11th session of the International Civil Aviation Organization Air Service Negotiation event goes on, it is likely more agreements may be signed. And that was a business tax report put together by Sheila Tamaklu. Now, Carl Bank is open to meet the new minimum capital requirement of 400 million Ghana cities. That is by next week. Now, that is if it's able to secure shareholders' approval to move some 50 million Ghana cities from its surplus account to the state capital. Now, this would actually increase the amount that they have from 350 to 400 million Ghana cities. It is going ahead with this action after it secured a court ruling in its favor today. And that's all for business on Newsnight. Back to you, uh, Gifty. And certainly, George, thank you very much. We look forward to uh, the visit of Christian Lagarde. And I'm certainly excited. So we have a session with the uh, women entrepreneurs. Exactly and I hope the point there. I was going to make. Uh, I, I think it will be good to be, to be there. I'll try. Okay, so let me read some of your comments. Uh, some of you have been sharing your comments with us on uh, WhatsApp. This one said, It is so surprising that a deputy information minister has messed up in public and doesn't know how to say sorry. I can clearly see he didn't know uh, his left from his right when he was coming on air. This government has 111 ministers and messing up this way. May God save Ghana from this confused government. Uh, Perpetual Ankobia from Tafo Pankrono constituency. This one says government should abrogate this drone deal, rather fix the ambulance service and build more chips compound from Evans in Ajusso. I see. My name's sick. Thank you, Evans, <laughs> for joining us. Uh, also, uh, in Bokrom Kumase, uh, Donald says uh, we are pleading with the people of Dagwon to collaborate with their Santahini and his uh, chiefs to bring lasting solution to Dagwon. We need peace and unity in Dagwon for massive development. I'm grateful that you all join us with your thoughts on this. Let's quickly move on to uh, a, a story that has, uh, has generated some measure of controversy. And it has to do with the comments made today by a former Supreme Court judge uh, who has said that uh, there are people still attempting to bribe, guess what? Supreme Court judges. Now, three years ago, investigative journalist Anas Aremeya Anas, you remember that, exposed deep-rooted corruption 
in a judiciary. The effect of his work led to the dismissal of some high and lower court judges implicated in the scandal. The service undertook far-reaching reforms to restore public confidence in the judiciary. But that appears not to have worked because uh, some persons still believe justice can be bought and are still attempting to bribe judges. Well, that's what retired judge Justice William Matuguba is saying. He was speaking at the Advent Lecture Series organized by the Catholic Church in Accra. Listen. That, that election petition was decided through prayer by the panel. Well, not young people. I'm 70 years old. Not a young man. That's why I retired. Some were older, but nobody broke down throughout the eight months of that trial, long hours of sitting. And when the decision came, there was peace, total peace in the country. Also, the vilifications, they are unending, and sometimes most painful. You can't believe that some human beings are capable of diabolical behavior. I looked at this this way. This was a very hot issue that rocked this country. By the grace of God, he answered our prayers and things have done cooling. So why don't I sacrifice my personal interest for the continuity of the peace? So I left. Not that it's not painful. God um, redresses evils in his own time. Apart from Political challenges in the cases are certain. There were other challenges. You can't believe that some people will even dare trying to induce even Supreme Court judges with money to decide cases in their favor. So that's uh, Justice Atuguba there. His comments uh, have Rather a few feathers, uh, a gift in the yeah. legal profession, with some calling on him to provide evidence to back his claims. U.S.-based Ghanaian lawyer Professor Kweku Asari in a Facebook post took, he took on Justice Atuguba and wrote, for example, quote, according to Justice Atuguba, uh, some, and this is a quotation, some people will even dare to try to induce even Supreme Court judges with money to decide cases in their favor. He goes on to say, this is a very serious allegation coming from a Supreme Court judge. I believe he should be compelled to give further and better particulars of such attempts as they are clearly criminal and his failure to report the crimes to the police makes him, at the very least, guilty of obstructing justice, imprisoning felony, etc. That ends the quote. And thankfully, Professor Sari himself is on the line with us. Hello, Professor Sari. Thank you for your time here on Newsnight. Good evening, Ivan. Thanks for getting in touch. Hope all is well. Oh, everything is well in, in, in Ghana. Tell me, so you believe he should just not make these pronouncements? He should go further or indicate what he did because this is a criminal offense, if indeed the attempt was made to bribe a Supreme Court judge? Absolutely, and without doubt. Uh, first of all, the Code of Ethics, the Code of Ethics for Judges, compels him to do that. There is a clear uh, provision in the judge's code of ethics, which says where a judge becomes aware of such actions, other judges or a judge being bribed, then he is compelled to report to the chief justice. And of course, he's also compelled to report to the police. In much the same way as Martin Amidu recently reported people who were trying to influence this investigation of Ayariga to Yoko. It is a very serious case when a Supreme Court judge alleges that he has evidence that either him or other members of the Supreme Court were influenced, or at least somebody attempted to influence them, and then he has this evidence, He's talking about it, but nobody cares, or the police doesn't invite him to give evidence to that effect. That right there brings down the uh, justice system. It taints the justice system. If anyone other than a Supreme Court judge had made that allegation, 
you would see the Supreme Court invite that person for contempt proceedings. They would uh, try that person in five minutes and send him to prison. But because he's a Supreme Court judge, he's allowed to make these allegations without backing it with any evidence. If he is aware of that evidence, then the police should invite him, like Yoko is in investigating those who attempted to influence the special prosecutor. And finally, Evans, it's not fair to the parties who appear before the Supreme Court to hear that in some of their cases, perhaps the decisions were influenced by people mm. who attempted to or perhaps bribed the Supreme Court right. judge. P- Professor Sari, so are you leaving your demand at his discretion or in, you intend to uh, explore the, the provisions in the Constitution? To, I'm to not going to explore anything, but the, the whole country should be startled by that. Where a Supreme Court justice, no less than the one who presided over perhaps the most important case in our judicial life, comes out and says that he or other members of the Supreme Court, people have attempted to bribe them, and we don't do anything, then we are not a very serious country. Then we are not very serious about corruption. Okay. Because the way we treat small people, the way we treat uh, uh, the the way we treat crunching, that's the same way we should treat Supreme Court justice. In fact, I would argue that we should even hold Supreme Court justices to a higher standard. And the General Legal Council itself, if a lawyer had made this assertion, the General Legal Council on its own would invite that lawyer to appear before it. So the General Legal Council should have invited Justice Atukuba to appear before it, not only the General Legal Council, but the Judicial Council itself. I, I it's see. Justice itself. Let, let, let me invite him. Let me let me quickly bring in a colleague of yours, uh, another lawyer, uh, Martin Pebu, probably legal practitioner. So, Mr. Pebu, do you agree with with what you just heard from Professor Sari? Well, Evans, that's very difficult because. Uh, I, you know, in context, in context, it's difficult to go with Prof. I mean, we all know the good work Prof is done and all this. But you see, when I say in context, looking at our Ghanaian society, it's sufficient at this stage that Yassi uh, Satukuba came out that there was an attempt and that attempt was scuttled, meaning that they rejected, they sent the person away. At this stage, you see, uh, Evan, you know, we have the black letter of the law, but we also have our social norms and all those things, and written conventions, okay? It, it, you know, it's going to scatter the whole society if you were going to ask Justice Atuba to go make a report to bring out this person. It, it, it's difficult. I mean, I have to just be plain. You see, when we are fighting... Well, 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 when you say it's difficult, what is difficult? That, that what uh, Professor Sari is asking is difficult? Yes, to be candid. Well, why? Why? Because we've seen we've seen when people like um, other j- lawyers had made this allegation against judges, they were quickly hauled and, and charged with contending. But the the uh, general legal counsel did same. Why must it be different from a, a, a retired Supreme Court judge? Yes, because Evans, this is political economy. You also have to be careful that in trying to resolve a problem or in trying to solve your social problem, you don't create new ones. I'm sure you've heard of the saying, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Okay? The more things change, the more they remain the same. At this, at this level, to bring him before the General Legal Council and to bring... Look, the chaos you would cause, it would appear that you would have just been better off not even starting such a venture. Sometimes you choose the fight carefully, very carefully. So this one, for me... I'm satisfied that he has publicly stated that there was an attempt, and from the context of his statement, he rebuffed it. And that is very commendable. And indeed, after the Amash expose, Evans, let's not take it for granted. We've made giant strides. Yeah. Uh, and, very giant strides. And, and I must say, and I must say, this is such a fascinating conversation. And unfortunately, we run out of time on this. Professor, uh, sorry, great that you joined us. I'm, I'm grateful that you joined us. Uh, also, uh, to you, 
um, the private legal practitioner, Martin, uh, Martin Kwebu. Let's do sports now. And Baba is here with the very latest. Hello, Babs. Hi, Evans. Uh, you know, um, the search for a new host for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations tournament is still on. You know, Cameroon was stripped of the rights uh, late last night, uh, last month. Now, Youth and Sports Minister Isaac Isiyama has stated Ghana's readiness to host any CAF organized event. It has to do so even immediately. According to the Member of Parliament for Echuman Punua in the Ashanti region, government is investing heavily in sports infrastructure with the sole aim of developing a nurturing sports talent to make Ghana highly competitive internationally. Now, this comes as welcoming news as Morocco officially ruled out joining the bidding process to host the 2019 tournament earlier today. Isaac Isiyama, who spoke during an inspection visit to a multi-purpose sports centre in Koforidia, believes Ghana is more than ready if the opportunity comes. Ghana stands ready to host any CAF organized tournament. We are ready. Even today, if they say we should go ahead and host uh, the Cameroon one, Ghana is ready. They will say maybe we have become too greedy after hosting this one. And other countries will also get it. But if they should give it to Ghana, I can tell you with all the confidence that this country stands ready to host any CAF organized tournament. And in some unfortunate news, Ghana is out of the ongoing Wafu Zone B and the 20 Championship in Togo after losing by four goals to two to Nigeria. The Black Satellites lost their first game by a lone goal to nil to Niger about a week ago. And Benin, who were in Group B, withdrew just when the tournament started, leaving um, Ghana's group with only three teams. Therefore, Niger and Nigeria qualified to the semi-finals of the tournament, together with Senegal and Mali from Group A. And Evans, Real Madrid is losing at home in the UEFA Championship. They are, playing who? they are playing Cheska Moscow, CSK uh -huh. Moscow. Yes, uh, it's half time, and that game is 2-0 oh. uh, at the Santiago Bernabeu. Oh, they side the coach. <laughs> and in the same group, uh, that's Group G. Victoria Fletcher are also playing against Roma. Oh, United. It's goalless. I'll tell you about United's uh, um, fixture in a bit. But uh, in Group E, Ajax are taking on FC Bayern München. Benfica are up against Bayern AEK. München. You mean Bayern Munich. By mention, yes. By Munich, yes. Uh -huh, okay. Let's <laughs> take on AEK Athens. Uh, uh, Manchester City are at home to Hoffenheim. Shakhtar Donetsk also hosts Lyon. In other matches, uh, but Manchester United, you are away to Valencia in Spain. And then in your group, you also have Juventus traveling to Switzerland to play Young Boys. Uh, that's your sport for now. Uh, thank, you thank you very well. much, Baba. Uh, from young boys to old men, old men in parliament, arguing about one word. What word was that, Gifty? It starts with a P. Okay, but it's, uh, it's is it? There is Po and there is Po. There is Po and there is Po. Yes. So they've been arguing about Po and Po. Apparently someone wanted, wanted to say Po, po and, and said, said po. po. And then it turns out that the allegation was that the person who had the Po may have a hearing in Problem. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Section of the population who don't have access to water can have portable water. And for that matter, the minister intends to and hold on, hold on. what we are dealing with is not portable water. We are dealing with portable water. I don't remember, you must remember that some of us, uh, those who went to some schools, uh, pronunciations are not the same as those of you who went to some Mr. Speaker, that is not a point. I think, I think some members have hearing problems and that they need medical attention. Mr. Speaker, my daughter tell you that you know, uh, my friend. Go, go and ask your. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't end, go and ask you, what, he, what does he want to say by that? I, I don't know. We, we, maybe Gakwa can tell as, us. As a gun man, there's something ringing in my head <laughs> <laughs> that I can't say. But <laughs> Please don't say. <laughs> you say. But, but whether Po or, or po, po, there's a water at the end of the word. Yes, but I, but just for the correction, for those who... Oh, uh, it's portable it's water. Portable. And, and the Associate Minister Bones was He right. mentioned it very, very uh, well. you know, succinctly, yeah. nicely okay. mentioned. That's portable, it. portable That's water. <laughs> That's it for news night tonight. Whatever he wanted to say at the end that he didn't say, my gum brain has solved it. Keep it in your head. Yes, it will remain there. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Evans Mensah. My name is Gifty Andropia. Enjoy your evening.